Hello and welcome once again to your favorite channel, Back in History. Back in History sets out to discuss the history of Africa, to document the history of Africa. And Nigeria, my country, has to naturally take the larger chunk of the discussion about the history of Africa. Nigeria has a long history. It gained independence in 1960. And from 1960 to 1999, Nigeria had a total of eight military coups. So Nigeria has been governed by military administrators and has also been governed by civilian administrations. And a part of Nigeria's history is the fact that in between the eight military coups, lots of persons were killed by the coup plotters. And one of the persons that was killed was a military head of state. If you have traveled to Nigeria before from other countries or if you are taking off from Nigeria, you are mostly using a popular international airport known as the Motala Mohammed International Airport in Lagos. That airport is named after that Nigerian leader that was killed. Motala Mohammed took over government from Yakub Gowon. And Motala Mohammed ruled for only 200 days. On the dot of 200 days, Motala Mohammed was shot and killed by Boka Suka Dimka and his military gang, his military men. Boka Duka Simka was a lieutenant colonel. Motala Mohammed was a general. And where I am today is the National Museum in Lagos. And particularly, the background here that you have seen is the room that has been um, built specifically to immortalize what happened to Motala Mohammed. Motala Mohammed was shot and killed in the Mercedes-Benz car that I'm showing you now. You can see this Mercedes-Benz car. That's the car that Motala Mohammed was in in 1976 on his way. Some part of history says that he was on his way to uh, office. Others say that he was on his way back from the mosque. But the fact remains that it was on a Friday and um, Motala Mohammed was someone who was always going to the office. He was a workaholic, as the people that have known him have said. And so he left, going to the office on his way. His vehicle was attacked at a traffic jam. Motala Mohammed is said to have been someone who was not uh, interested in going in bulletproof vehicle and who was not also interested in going in. Um, uh, with so much escort. So he just left himself, his driver, his ADC, and off they left. And as a, at a traffic jam, you know, one of the things you know about Lagos is the fact that there is traffic everywhere in Lagos. I, I, honestly, I do not know whether there is any way in Lagos that there is no traffic. As you are getting out of your house, you are meeting traffic in Lagos. So Motala ran into a traffic jam in Lagos. And while he was waiting, obviously was also one military head of state that was not interested in, bre in um, breaching traffic rules, so he had to wait for traffic to clear. And while he was waiting, seated at this corner of the vehicle, and the vehicle was not tinted, you can see, it's not tinted. So while sitting at this corner of the vehicle, the assailants appeared. And that team was led by Lieutenant Colonel Bukasuka Dimka, and this part of the vehicle was shot and broken. You can see that here there is no glass. Here there is a glass, the white glass. So this was shot and broken. You can see the wound on this vehicle. That's the bullet wound. There's another bullet wound here, piercing right into the vehicle. There is another bullet wound here, you know, which also pierced right into the vehicle. These are two bullet points, okay? And it came right in, and this is where Motala sat as the military head of state of Nigeria, and he was killed. You can see the bullet wound here also. You can see the wound. So obviously he was shot from a very close range. You can see the wound here on this vehicle, the bullet wounds. There is also a bullet wound there. There is also the bullet wound here, and Motala was killed instantly in this vehicle. Where you're seeing here is where Motala sat as military head of state of Nigeria. 
You will also see here that um, uh, the assailants also uh, shot at the front of the vehicle. This is the front of the vehicle. Okay, this is the front view of the vehicle. And you can see here the bullet wounds at the front of the vehicle. So this one obviously went straight to the driver and killed him. You can see the steering of the vehicle there and you can see it here. So this one obviously killed the driver instantly. And this one also, you know, killed the driver. It, it, it was, it was um, a coordinated attack by these persons that came to shoot and kill. And they meant business. Obviously, they did not just want to attempt the killing. They wanted to be sure that Motala is gone. And truly, Motala was killed in that attack. And so the vehicle has been kept since 1976 till today, Mercedes-Benz. And you know, Mercedes-Benz is one strong vehicle. I have been told by the tour guide here that the tires of this vehicle are usually given to the National Museum by Dunlop. Um, every year just to replace and see keep this vehicle in good condition you can see another bullet wound here to the uh, mirror of the car you can also see another bullet uh, wound here you can see another bullet wound so it was it was a coordinated attack it was well intended the whole essence was to make sure that the target is not missed and look at it here, you can see. And this happens to be a special kind of uh, Mercedes-Benz at the time, because normally a Stallone Mercedes-Benz, you would see just two rows, one, two. But this one has three rows. So it was obviously a special kind of Mercedes-Benz um, for the prestigious office of the military head of state. Now, the assailants shot from behind also and what you are seeing here is the rear of the car and there is no glass here there is no glass because it was also shot and broken okay it was also shot and broken and this is the nigeria's um, coat of arm that was there to signify the prestigious office of the president of the country and um that's it, well preserved by the Nigerian government. History teaches us a whole lot. And today, you have learned this part of the history of Nigeria. You have learned this part of the history of Nigeria. And um, this is a whole lot of history lying down here. And following the assassination of Motala Mohammed, Following the assassination of Motala Mohammed, um, his vice, Olusha Gunobasanjo, became the next head of state of Nigeria. Um, history has it that uh, the assailants also wanted to kill Olusha Gunobasanjo, but luckily for him, he had a naming ceremony in his house. Uh, a young friend of his brought um, an invitation for him to to seek his permission to name his child after Olusha Gunobasanjo, and that's what delayed him. If not, it would have been almost following the vehicle, the convoy uh, of the head of state. So Obasanjo was served, he wasn't killed. And um, Obasanjo then became the next military head of state, taking over from the slain uh, Motala Mohammed. And upon Obasanjo taking over the helm of office, he made Musa Yaradwa as the deputy head of state from the northern region of the country. Obasanjo went on to govern from 1976 to 1979 when he handed over power to a civilian administration. He saw to the conduct of civilian I mean, election and the handing over of power to a civilian administrator in the name of, in the person of Alaji Sheo Shagari. And um, from then on, Shagari governed for four years, went for another four years. And as he was just starting, there was another military coup, and that military coup swept him out of office. And the next head of state of Nigeria was um, Mohamedou Buhari. 
So Nigeria's history is a broad history. And what you are seeing here, just beside me, the vehicle that Motala Mohammed stayed, you can see it's written here, the state car in which General Motala Mo Ramat Mohammed was assassinated. This is the description given to this vehicle. And this tells you a whole lot about the history of Nigeria. I, I do hope you have learned one or two things about this aspect of Nigeria's history. And um, it is my wish as a Nigerian citizen that this doesn't happen again in the history of our country. It is my wish also that we don't even have military rules anymore in our country. Let us govern this country by democratic administration as much as we can. Motala Mohammed was, I think, 42 years old when he died. And at 42, he had six children. He was married to a Yoruba um, Muslim, a Yoruba uh, Christian, Ajoke Mohammed, and together they bonded together, and um, the family lost Motala Mohammed, and then had to bear the vicissitudes of life by all alone by Ajoke Mohammed and the children. Children are all grown, and um, I'm sure some of them are still alive to remember their dearly beloved father who was killed in this circumstance. Many thanks always for always tuning to our channel.